Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show the differences between having CPU boosts on and off, as well explain exactly what it is and how it will have an effect on our performance, if any. This video should prove to be useful for any handheld or laptop owner wondering if they should have the option enabled or not. As always, we'll kick off with the how-to. Activating the option needs to be done through a registry edit. Don't worry though, it's super simple. First, bring up the search menu and type in Registry Editor, and it should pop up once you type in REG. Going into the editor as shown here, just follow the file path that's listed at the top here. Uh, the files will be on the left, just click through the folders and then the, until you get to this location. I'll have it listed in the description as well. And now, once that the folder, select the attribute and then modify, and then value of attributes from one to two. So you're basically just changing the value from one to two. And when you save all that, now when you go back into Windows Search, type in Edit Power Plan, that will open up the Power Menu Settings. Once in there, click on the Advanced Power Settings, then Processor Power Management. There will be a new third option under the Minimum and Maximum Power State. Change this from Aggressive to Disabled. Note that there is an Efficient Mode in there as well, which we'll talk about later. Keep in mind you'll have to make this change for each power profile, or at the very least when you're plugged in and not, otherwise the default will be aggressive. All right, now that we have that disabled, what exactly does it do? To explain it as briefly as possible, it disables the ability for the CPU to boost up higher than its max base speed, which is 3.3 GHz. Otherwise, when enabled, if a task is demanding more CPU power, the chip is able to pull more voltage and boost up higher, up to 5.1 GHz on the Z1 Extreme. With that disabled, we are missing out on at least 2 GHz of clock speeds. However, having a base clock speed of 3.3 GHz that should be plenty powerful enough for most games, however, in CPU intensive games, we could see a loss in performance, such as strategy games. Uh, I know Factorio is a huge CPU hog. I've never played it, but I've heard as such. Now on the flip side, this will potentially save us more battery life. How much life though? It better be a fair amount for it to be worth it. Moving over to testing, I used the same games from my previous video on the Ultimate uh, Bio Showdown there. Uh, a, because now I don't have to benchmark twice, and B, I would have used these same games anyway. So I'll show Tears of the Kingdom as well towards the end of the video to address any performance concerns with respect to emulation. I'm not going to get too detailed into performance of these games, because there's nothing too much to report. I could make the charts up for it, but it would not show any difference really whatsoever. It's all within margin of error, with the exception of Gears War 5. We had the ex exact same overall FPS average and 0.1% low, however we had a 21 1% low versus 33 with my 32 uh, BIOS boost on run. None of these games are CPU intensive enough to show any sort of measurable difference, which is a good thing in a sense. I say this because if you play similar games, having this option disabled should not net you any sort of performance loss. However, as games are clearly getting more and more CPU demanding, such as Jedi Survivor and really any recent release of this year, add into that if you use FSR2 upscaling, this is a process that's put over onto the CPU, meaning if you are already playing a CPU heavy game and plan on using FSR, this could net a performance loss or result in more moments of stutter. In an attempt to limit us more by our CPU than our GPU, I decided to run the Hitman 3 Dartmoor benchmark again, this time at 720p FSR Ultra Performance, with all the graphical options set to their lowest value, however I did turn on ray trace shadows and reflections to throw more load onto the CPU as having a higher CPU clock speed will help in ray traced applications. You can see that in CPU boost mode on, we are reaching 3.4 GHz and higher. However, when disabled, we are only ever allowed to reach 3.25 GHz. Uh, it should not make that big of a difference, but as you can see, as we move over to more CPU-driven tasks, such as Cinebench R23, when limited to just 3.3 GHz, we get a terrible single core score of 1133, and the APU only pulls about 8 watts in this mode. So while there is potential for gains to be had in the battery life, at what cost of performance? 
Running Cinebench again with CPU boost turned back on, the fans actually kicked in and brought us up to over over 44 degrees this time, uh, bringing in a score of 1732 with clocks reaching about 4.7 gigahertz at times. Going over to Furmark, running their 1080p benchmark test, we received a score of 1562 and an overall average FPS of 27. Turning CPU boost back off, it gave us a score of 1544 with a score of 26 FPS. I did run these tests multiple times and the scores were always within 10 points of each other. Finally for benchmarking, we have the Unigen Heaven benchmark running this on high, tessellation normal at 1080p. We received a score of 722 at FPS average of 28.7 uh, with the boost turned on. With the boost turned off, we received a score of 749 and an FPS average of 29.7, so 1 FPS more. You can also see in the footage that the CPU is having movements of boosting up to and above and beyond 3.3 GHz, reaching 4 GHz at times in boost on mode. However, we can also see that the GPU has little moments of it boosting up to 2.1 GHz, something not seen on boost mode on. In these cases, depending on your workload and gaming habits, having CPU boost off can be detrimental to performance in CPU driven tasks. As well, if you are the type to play any sort of MMO, such as World of Warcraft, which is fantastic on the Ally, by the way, uh, having a slower CPU can hurt performance there as well. When it comes to emulation, using Tears of the Kingdom as a benchmark, running the 45 FPS mod and others found in the description, we can see that when in CPU boost off mode, the APU barely goes over 15 watts at times, because it cannot draw more voltage to increase its clock speeds, thus decreasing performance, as suspected. However, I did not expect for the APU to barely be pulling 15 watts when maxed out. With the CPU boost turned back on, we can see our clock speeds will fly. Now, moving over to battery testing, I used my Hitman 3 benchmark, all low 720p FSR Ultra Performance as the RT kept causing the looping benchmark to crash. The APU was set to 25 watt and the device was charged until the light at the top of the device was turned white. Doing the test with RT turned off saw our CPU boosting up to and above 3.8 GHz. Doing this loop test netted us uh, 59 minutes of battery life, whereas the boost off we got a battery life total of 1 hour and 6 minutes. However, being limited by the CPU in this situation does hurt our performance. The game definitely called for more than 3.3 GHz when using this configuration. Not to say that this is a very good representation, however if you are the type of person to turn down settings and hope for higher FPS, say for a competitive shooter for example, you could see a performance loss as a result of not being able to boost beyond 3.3 GHz. I spoke about the efficient mode earlier, um, however when I have those modes applied it seems to only allow it to boost up to 3 GHz, so less than went off, except in bursty moments like loading. Now. With the system drawing roughly 38 watts of power from battery uh, with boost on, as opposed to 30 watts during boost off, the difference is big, yes, but you can see that we are hobbling our CPU and not getting more than 20 watts to the APU typically. In conclusion, is it worth it to turn off CPU boost? In my personal opinion, no. The only time you would potentially see a difference is when you are in a heavily GPU bound game or scenario, which can and does happen in 1080p on this device. However, the difference is only measurable in benchmarks. In day-to-day -day gameplay, you likely wouldn't notice anything at all. On the CPU side though, there are often times when having a higher clock will help, such as for emulation and resource building games. Honestly, if ASUS felt it necessary to limit the CPU clocks to 3.3 GHz, which is less than the Steam Deck, mind you, they wouldn't have gone for such a high power chip. But we can see there are often times when allowing the CPU to boost up uh, proved more useful than the GPU being allowed more voltage. Another example would be playing a AAA recent release title at 720p, you would likely use some FSR, which again is thrown to the CPU. Sure, you are saving GPU power for hopefully better performance, however you will likely see little to no improvement going from FSR quality to performance due to being locked at 3.3 GHz. As such, I would personally recommend you avoid turning CPU boost off, if only to save you the hassle of trying to remember which games benefit from it and which ones are hurt from it. Yes, there are times when the CPU could draw more power than necessary, but I would rather have access to the full speed of my chip instead of hindering my performance in high FPS scenarios. If you were to disable it, I would recommend you at least try the efficiency mode instead of aggressive, as it does appear to pull more wattage than disabled, but less than aggressive. 
Um, finally, when playing at a reasonable TDP, your CPU would likely not have access to much past 3.3 GHz anyway. In turn, saving performance whether you have this feature on or off, with the benefit of being able to boost up higher during loading. We're only really limiting our performance in a situation where we would most likely be plugged in or at least near one. If you're an absolute mad lad who's using their ally as a laptop, absolutely do not disable this. This would only make sense for me uh, on a work laptop or like word processing laptop, which would not have a high draw power chip anyway. And there you have it. Hopefully this helped communicate what exactly CPU boost is and does. As well, this should bring an end to the debate of having it turned on or off. As such, I will not be recommending this in my optimization and deblow guide, as for me personally, it did not offer a significant boost to battery in my use cases. Uh, it did for Hitman, but that was when we were basically just making it throttle by CPU, so it wasn't even getting the full 25 watt of power most of the time. I would recommend that you do use a CPU clock speed app or use handheld companions auto TDP feature. That would be my move personally. That way you're doing it on a game by game basis instead of across the board when turning boost off. To close this video off, I want to mention something that I never thought I would have to say. I have my first channel member. Unfortunately, I don't have much in the way to offer, so that's why I don't really advertise it. Actually, I don't advertise it at all. Uh, being a member is just a direct way to support the channel, so a massive shout out goes to Joey VR. Remember, you don't need to be here for a long time, just a good time. Thanks again for supporting the channel, and thanks again to every one of you for taking the time to watch. As a small thank you, I'll be giving away a $30 Amazon gift card once I reach 2,500 subs, which is very close to happening. To enter in the giveaway, just leave a comment down below. Do not mention the giveaway in your comment. A random winner will be picked this Thursday, July 13th. You must be in a country that has Amazon so I can purchase a card for you in your local currency. The last giveaway I did, I gave away full or two full price games, sorry. However, because there was a Steam Summer Sale, I was able to give away two games to each of the winners. So I was giving away Cyberpunk to both of them and then uh, Modern Warfare 2 and Elden Ring. I will do another giveaway like this at our next major milestone, which I would think naturally should be 5,000, but let me know what you think in the comments. As always, I hope you have a great day.